Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, your place for news and gameplay. Some good, some bad, and let's be honest, likely some rage and tilting. If you like what you see, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell for notifications. In today's episode, we're taking a look at some more of the test server action, where we have another rebalance in the test server, as well as a Ragnarok pack. I'm going to be running two games a little bit later. Uh, first, we'll just highlight some of the typical bots that are in the live server right now running some of the changes that have been put into the balances and the second one will be focusing more on the Ragnarok box itself. So to get started let's do a quick overview of what has and has not changed in the test server for the rebalancing purposes. So first off if we look at the bots that have been nerfed. The Mercury is still getting an ability cooldown nerf. And from last week, it was actually a four second increase, but this week it's now just down to three seconds. The ability damage nerf has been removed. The stealth duration has been removed as well. So the only nerf now to the Mercury is a three second ability cooldown. The Invader hasn't changed at all from last week. It's still being nerfed. The dur durability is being decreased by 20,000 hit points. The speed is being increased by 4,000 clams per hour. And the ability to cool down is being decreased by 3 seconds. Last week, the Hellburner was getting a nerf, but the Hellburner has actually been re completely rescinded. There is no nerf now in the test server for this weekend for the Hellburner. For the robots and their buffs, we have the Raker, which is unchanged from last week. An ability damage increase, as well as its shooting mechanic, has been changed. The Blitz is also unchanged from last week. The Durability has been increased. The Ability to Damage, it, it has it inflicts, is now increased a little bit. The Aegis Durability Shield has been increased, as well as the speed has been increased by 10 kilometers per hour. The Hades, as well, has not been ch changed from last week. It has an Ability to Damage increase of 2,000, and it has better aim and faster rounds. The Nemesis is the same as last week as well, a durability increase, and its retribution damage ratio, its absorption rate has actually been increased a little bit. The Strider has its ability cooldown been reduced by two seconds. The Wayland has not been changed from last week as well, faster mode change, the repair radius has been uh, uh, increased, the repair power has been increased, and its durability has been increased. The Mender is the same as last week with respect of the fourth repairing pulse. However, the repair power has been changed for this test server. Last week, the repair power was reduced by 4,000 healing points. This time, it's only been reduced by 3,250. So they've actually increased the healing an extra 750 per pulse for this weekend's test server. So if you do the math over four pulses compared to three pulses right now in the original test server, you're actually getting an additional 5,500 hit points being uh, added or healed, I should say, to bots around you. The Ryzen, it has been unchanged from its test server last week. It's, it has its dur shield durability increase. Same th thing with the Leo and the Galahad. Both are unchanged from last week. The buffs to the weapons. The Wasp has been unchanged. Uh, fire rate increase, damage, and corrosion is all the same as it was last week. The Shock Train had, uh, it buff that was last week has actually been removed. The Shock Train is not, at least at this point in time in, in the test server, being changed. The Pulsar is still being changed, however, its fire rate has been decreased slightly from the test server last week. The test server last week was an additional 0 0.07 seconds of the fire rate, now it's only 0 0.05 seconds uh, re reduction. So it's gone now from 0.27 seconds of a fire rate to 0.22 seconds of a fire rate. And uh, its damage is the same as last week, it has been increased slightly by 200 points. The Shredder Lockdown is unchanged from last week. It has Lockdown Chance now of 34%. The Ion Damage Increase that was instituted last week in the test server has actually been removed, so there is no change to the Ion Weapon in this test server, other than the damage was slightly reduced, though. I, I, I should... Uh, I should rescind what I said there. The damage has not been the damage change has not been removed. It's actually just been reduced by it looks like six hundred points. So it do, it still gets a small buff, but not very much. 
The Corona does still get the same buff as it was last week, a slight uh, fire rate reduction, and the reload speed has actually been reduced as well. The Glory still gets a slight damage increase, uh, unchanged from last week. The Redeemer, its mechanics has been changed from la as the same as last week. It's getting uh, an additional six ammo shots, three shots in a string instead of two. Uh, the shorter gap between shots and the shorter gap between the strings are all, all unchanged from last week. However, they have added one item to the Redeemer. They have actually decreased the damage on each individual shot for this test server. So now instead of doing 10,160 points of damage, it has been reduced to 7,250. So that's a reduction of 2,910 points of damage. Now into the nerfs that were there last week and are also there this week, we have the Trident. It has still had its area of impact uh, effect nerfed by 7 meters. So it's now down to 12. However, the damage reduction that was last week has been removed. So now it does the same amount of damage as it does on the live server. The Avenger, it still gets a shell spread increase of, uh, of 5%. Sorry. And that just means it's a bit worse at longer distances. However, the damage de decrease has been removed. So there is, right now anyways, there's no nerf to the damage of the Avengers. And thankfully, the Orkin, Telumbots, Halo, and Gus have all had their changes removed from this test server. So there are no nerf, at least at this point in time, for the Orkin, Telumbots, Halo, and Gust. Now let's quickly look at the hangers I'm going to be running here. So the first game, I'm going to be running, as I said, just a standard boss or live server. We're going to have the Ares running Pulsars and Shredders, the Mercury, Gus, and Glory. We have the Blitz running four Halos. We're going to have the Invader running two Gusts and a Corona. And finally, we're going to run the Strider with an Ember and two Shredders. And if we swap quickly over to our second hangar, in it for the Ragnarok pack, we're going to be running a Fenrir with Avengers and Punisher Tees, another Fenrir with Tyrons and Redeemer, a tier with a Scourge and Spark, Another tier with Vortex and Aphids. And finally, we're going to run a Loki with three Halos. Well, without any further ado, let's get into the action. And then at the end, I will give my feedback on the specific changes that have been introduced in this test server.
Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed the gameplay. Now, let's just quickly get to my final butts, and I'll put the slides up on the screen here again. The robot nurse. Well, first off, I want to say, overall, Pixonic has done a much better job of the balance changes this week. Last week, they went completely overboard, in my opinion, and this time, it seems they've actually done their homework, hopefully listened to us, and that's why some of these changes were put in place, and and I, I must say, this is actually more of what a balance should be, and not going overboard like Pixonic tends to do when they do buffs and nerfs. So with that being said, let's quickly go over the changes here, and the Mercury uh, nerf only to the ability cooldown, I think that was needed. I don't think there was any other changes, so I agree with that nerf. The invader nerf, I, I do agree with. There was actually a number of things that need to be changed to that. Uh, the hellburner, I don't think it's really a huge problem anymore, so I'm okay with them reverting that change. Now into the buffs. The raker is actually an underused bot. However, I do know they did buff it a while ago, and I'll stand by my opinion that I don't think it really needs a buff. It, it is a little bit under, underused, but... When they changed the ability a uh, few updates ago and added the additional fire to its special built-in ability, you can actually now multiple times lock down a single target in front of you. By the time it wear its ability wears off, you can actually fire again and lock them, not lock them down, but you can suppress them uh, immediately. So I, I don't think it really is necessary. The buff to the Blitz, I don't think it's quite needed. The main complaint the Blitz has is the speed factor. I do think the speed needs to be increased, but I don't think the durability, the ability damage, and Aegis Shield need to be touched. I really just think it needs a speed increase. The Hades buff, I, I agree with. The Nemesis buff, I agree with. The Strider buff, I don't agree with. The ability cooldown being reduced by two seconds. The Strider is actually a very viable and effective bot if piloted correctly. I don't think it really needs its ability to cool down and reduce further just to be able to accumulate those five dashes quicker. The Waylon is an underused bot. It's I think it actually needs a rework. I don't think these changes are going to be enough for people to really use it. The problem is it's a stationary bot when it's in healing. And unless they decide to change the mechanics so that the bot is, can actually walk while it's healing, maybe at a reduced pace or something, but being a stationary bot... It's, it's not like it can really be that effective in the, the gameplay, especially with the introduction of things like the Ares and these other bots that are actually quite fast. They're, they're not going to stay in the range of a Whalen to, to be healed all the time. The Mender, I, I have seen its use rates being dropped off a little bit. I do think it needs a bit of a buff. I, I do agree with this buff that they're putting in here about the fourth repair pulse, and they have countered it with a reduction of the repair power per pulse, but the overall healing of a bot if it's in there for four pulses is increased slightly. Ryzen, the Leo, and the Galahad, they all need to be buffed, that's for sure. I agree with that. The weapon buffs, I rarely use the Wasp, and I think a lot of people rarely use it, so it probably does need a buff. I, I didn't think the Shock Train really needed any kind of a buff or a nerf whatsoever. I think it's okay where it is, and I'm glad they've removed it. The Pulsar, it actually is a very effective weapon, and I have them, so I, I am going to say I don't really think it needs a buff whatsoever. I mean, you put four of these on Inspector, and it, it will completely eliminate the, the enemy that you're, th you're throwing it at. Uh, it doesn't really need a fire rate increase, and it definitely does not need a damage increase. The Shredder, it's locked down, really is kind of pathetic, even at 26% in the, in the live server. I've used it several times, and it definitely does not feel like 26%. It feels more like 5% chance. At least that's the luck I have with it, so I do agree with the increase there. The Ion Weapon, uh, they've reduced the damage here, uh, but you still get an overall damage increase by 450. It, it does, I don't agree with the Ion change. It, it is a very powerful weapon when used correctly. Again, another thing, you put in on four, four of them on a Spectre, and you can actually just watch that thing being shredded away. Corona, I agree with the buff. It does need to be slightly increased. Same with the Glory. The Redeemer... This, this is hard to tell. I, I have noticed when I use for Redeemer, at least on the live server, it does fire quite slowly. I, I do think it needed to be a bit of a rework. I haven't used this enough on the test server to say whether I agree with it or not, but I do think the Redeemer did need some kind of a change, so I'm happy that they're looking at that anyways. Onto the nerfs of the weapons, the Trident, 
the Trident did need to have something done to it a little bit, just because it is starting to be used everywhere. You're seeing them on Falcons. You're seeing them on Furies. I've even seen them on things like Inquisitors uh, before. Uh, I'm glad they they reduced the damage a little bit in the area of effect. The Avenger, yeah, I, I'm glad they removed the damage uh, nerf from it. Uh, the Shell Spread, I'm okay with it. So I'm okay where the Avenger is right now. And I'm extremely glad that they removed the Orc and Columbus and Halo from the nerf category. As those are weapons that the lower tier end players tend to focus on. And you don't really want to be nerfing the lower end players because you want them to actually increase the in league standings and enjoy the game as well. If, so if you nerf their weapons, then you know what are they going to think about the game trying to go forward? A lot of people can't afford the newer weapons, so keep them in place. Don't don't do anything with them. Uh, yes, all these are very powerful on things like a, a Spectre, for instance, the Oracles and the Tolumbus. But the problem isn't the weapon. It's the bot. Why would you ever, Pixonic, have thought to put in a bot that has four medium slots? That's the problem right there. It's not the weapon. It's the, the bot itself, the Spectre. The Spectre is what makes these things seem overpowered. Anyways, those are my final thoughts. As always, leave a comment in below. If you like this video, feel free to, to like it and give me any constructive feedback you wish. And until next time, cause some mayhem on the field for me.